Bear Element, episode 28, recorded 31st July, 2013. Hello. Hi. Hello. Episode 28. Woohoo. Welcome. We're approaching 30. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was a good age for me. That's when I came. Oh, this is Vito. This is Wolfie. Say I'm Ronaldo. What was that? <laughs> Oi. I don't know. It's, it's, <laughs> that was Ron Ron. My Spanish name, Ron Ron. Okay. I'm Dave McHugh. <laughs> <laughs> and we have two guests. Ron, why don't you introduce our guests? Our guests uh, today are Ray Ray Cervantes and Brendan McQueeny, fantastic uh, local photographers and human beings in the bear community here. Very, very happy they agreed to be here. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Awesome. Well, Tim is uh, out today. He had an accident. He's okay. He actually went into surgery this morning for, I'm not exactly sure what it is, but he was on a bike and he fell off the bike. He fractured his humerus. Oh, that's, yes, Ron, you know this stuff. Yeah. His humerus. It's not, it's not, not so humorous. It's not funny. <laughs> it's yeah, not it's at not all humorous. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> he had to have pins and things. Ooh. Guy, yeah. 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 Sounds unpleasant. Yeah. I put, I thought I was clever, and I said, drugs, not hugs. <laughs> <laughs> no, this time, drugs, yes. <laughs> and just so we're clear, food. there have been allegations that I caused this accident so that I could come here today. <laughs> and I, I just want to, you know, please, if you have any comments on that, call my lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, did they, do you guys have to introduce yourself? My name is Ray Ray Cervantes and I'm a photographer here in San Francisco. My partner. I'm uh, Brendan McQueenie and uh, uh, do photography as well. Cool. Uh, wait a second. Did we, did we say about Clay? Did we talk about Clay? No. No, not yet. Oh, yeah, Clay's not feeling well today. That's why he's not here. And uh, we have two other guests with us. Very brown <laughs> chocolate guests. <laughs> Our chocolate Labs, Bailey and also. Oh, they're gorgeous. They're they're beautiful trouble. dogs. Thank you. They're Quite trouble. nice. <laughs> so, I have heard about you, Ray Ray, how annoying it must be to people to screw up your name, Brandon, Brendan. Your whole life, has this happened? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's Brandon? Brendan. You see, it's yeah. Brendan. I actually grew up uh, with my, my best friend's name was Brandon. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So, I'm used to it. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I just see how annoying that would be. <laughs> it's not... It, 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 it's not as bad as Ron Braun. I mean, that's pretty bad. <laughs> I've said twice, every, at least a couple of times each time. Well, I grew up using Mike. I was Mike or Michael. Really? Until I was in, I was in the drum corps, a drum corps called the Freelancers Drum and Bugle Corps based out of Sacramento. And they didn't ask me. And they put my name Vito on the core jacket. And I got so much attention for it, I started using Vito. Oh, interesting. But I was Mike before, so I didn't have... Hmm. So Vito's a uh, drag name. Yeah. <laughs> Vito is my real name. <laughs> but Brendan and Ray. Now, is your real name Ray? My real name is Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Yes. Okay. How did the double Ray Ray come about? Um, I was dating a guy in L.A. And at the time, I was living here in San Francisco. He was in L.A. And I found out like a month later, he had two other boyfriends. And both <laughs> of their guys' names were Ray. <laughs> so one guy came up to me and goes, are you Ray, Raymond, or Ray Ray? And I'm like. I'm from San Francisco. He says, oh, you're Ray Ray. The guy from New York is Raymond. The guy from L.A. is Ray. You're Ray Ray. And that's how that became. True story. Oh, that's wow. wild. That's, that's a good story. Yeah. Uh, you know, I came, into, uh, I came to San Francisco and, you know, not knowing. I knew a few people, but not a lot of people. But everybody knows Ray Ray and what an amazing photographer he is. And, um, and then you, you, you both have done these, these great layouts and spreads. And now I understand you have a book. We have a book. We, um, Brendan and I came up with this book to help out the ALC community, um, to raise some money for AIDS awareness. And, um, everything that's made from this book goes directly to the ALC. We make zero from this. So we the AIDS life cycle, right? Correct. AIDS life cycle. Um, we wanted to give back to the community and we thought the best way to do is through our photography. So we offered our free services and, um, got a bunch of people in and asked them to come in and would take pictures of them. And once we got the pictures from them, we would ask them 
to give us a reason why they why they ride the AOC and um, people actually either have real short or long stories. Um, I'm sorry, sorry. Brendan's looking at my face, going, "Why is he smiling?" Because your dog is licking my is licking my feet. Oh. <laughs> this yeah. is awesome. It's like dog I had a tail cries. tickling my belly a minute ago. <laughs> but anyway, are you sure it's his dog? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is maybe, someone else? Maybe Clay is feeling better. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> well, anyway, of course, we'll put uh, the book and everything on how to get it on the website. But, I mean, FYI, we've already had your pictures uh, because of because Donovan uh, came and uh, educated people about the ride also. Cool. And so I put, I hope that was okay. Yes, of course. To of course. put your picture oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> on the site. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Now, we're, both of your names are on the book. Correct. I noticed. Tell me what, who did what? Um, well, we both shoot together. He's more of the portrait photographer, though. Um, he's good with setting up people, making them feel comfortable, and getting the right shot that's in his head. Then I helped out with the post-processing and the layout of the book, and um, we came up with the ideas together to, you know, come up with the effect of the black and white with the red coming out. And it's gorgeous. Kind of just it's really it is very professional. Thank you. Thank you. Does it cost more to print the black? Um, no, actually, we went through blurb.com. Um, we didn't do a, a bulk order. We just let people order them if they want the book. It was the easiest way for us to get it done. And, uh, you know, if we had more time, maybe we could have done a, a print run, then had people buy the books from us. But That's, we just yeah. went through that. So Sounds like a lot of money up front. So you found yeah. a good way to do it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So the, the and the one thing that was going on also um the ALC writers um the is, is the New Bear Republic and what they were trying to do is raise money they wanted to come up with a calendar Brendan had talked to a couple of them and say why would you want to spend money to make money why don't we help you guys out and by doing this we'll just do this for free so and that's what we came up with this and it's um so far it's been doing pretty good that's that's great well, hopefully we'll help out a little bit that'd be awesome yeah <laughs> <laughs> but how did you guys I mean your partners correct mm-hmm. obviously and you both are into photography is that something that helped you guys get together as or while you were dating no um actually i've always liked photography but i've never really took it seriously until i met brendan and brendan he shoots um bands cover bands um he actually went last year and shot the foo fighters and um, awesome. bob mold um in la but i've always liked photography myself and i just said one day i want to pick up the cameras this is what i would do and this is what i like and brendan says well why don't you start doing portraits and I just started doing it like six years ago, and I enjoy it. Love it. Love it. But this is our part-time. We both have full-time jobs. There you go. Huh. Yeah. It's a great. So, well, your hobby is amazing. So, and Brendan, your thing is called a bare nose photos. photos. Yep. So, just for people out there, like, how would you then differentiate, besides your band pictures, what do you do, and then, you know, be, between what Ray Ray does? Like, what's different about your... Uh, I'm less studio work. I do some studio work with them. I mean, we both... Once it's set up, we both like to shoot in there, but I, I like more of chasing the light and the concert and having that variable in the scene and, uh, more landscape type of work too. Uh, but I, I enjoy it all. It's just, there's things that I'm drawn to mm-hmm. at concerts and, or outside in nature. Um, and he's, his strengths are with the portrait stuff. Do you have, you have a studio? We have our, our living room as our studio. Oh, okay. So yeah. we move everything out every time we do a photo shoot. And wow. There. Yeah. You yeah. have those big lights? Yep. We do. We have yeah. big lights, expensive lights. Yeah. <laughs> wow. We've put a lot of money into it. Yes. <laughs> do you My guys goodness. ever uh, get competitive? No, I like this photo better. I like this yes. photo better. Yes. It happens, <laughs> it happens quite, quite often, yeah. actually. <laughs> what, how do you resolve that? I usually win because it's <laughs> <laughs> no, we actually go back and forth. And um, once in a while, I'll say, you know what? You're right. Um, so <laughs> not often enough. Not often, but it's, <laughs> I do. I can and, relate to that. The, and this book, I'm looking through it. It's it's really striking. Uh, not only does it have some beautiful men in it, but it has some re- really nice phrases and sayings and. I guess is there something in that book or about that book that 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 stands out most for you, or do you have a favorite page or a favorite phrase or a favorite moment about making that book? Well, I think um, for us, the reason we had we um, when people were asking us what our reason why why we did this book was because of the fact that we lost a friend a couple of years ago to AIDS, and um, yeah, so we just decided to dedicate it to him. Oh, where's that coming from? I think Ray Ray's mic just came out. I think it could be the... Oh, so chewing on the wire. 
What did he do? <sighs> I suspect. Uh, did he actually? This play? does not happen every day. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know if I want to know what happened. I don't know, but all right. Well, here he can. We'll share mics. Oh and we'll bu- <laughs> Sorry about that. Wow. <laughs> the dog ate right through the cord. Uh, I have to say that's pretty uh, awesome. That's pretty funny. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> that's very unusual. Right. And and the strange thing is it was timed it was. It right. was like this very strange <laughs> moment where Ray Ray's getting emotional and his mic cuts out and it's a dog. It's the dog eating his wire. I thought it was Ray getting emotional. She's good. She's a good one. She's see, a good girl. See, Ray Ray, it, it, it's just like... Stu- oh, and it's it's lipstick, lipstick, lipstick is out. It's just like Steel Magnolias. Laughter through tears is the best emotion. Yes. That's hysterical. It's okay. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Other side, yeah. Turn it to yeah. Well, it's so you can. Well, uh, we had an incident, <laughs> <laughs> and one we're of, back from our technical and we're back. We're back. <laughs> one of the puppies <laughs> ate uh, Ray Ray's microphone cable. <laughs> So, <laughs> besides being in uh, an emotion for his friend, yeah. the timing was incredible. <laughs> it really was. Yes, yeah. you know, I I think we've all lost people to AIDS, and uh, it's I, a beautiful tribute. And yeah, this is amazing. And hopefully, one day that won't be so. But what um, this the photography thing seems like an all encompassing kind of hobby. Is yes, it? it is. It's it, it's a it's a business. It's a it's a weekend business that we do. Um, but also, I, I just love it so much that I you know I'm able to do it on the weekends. And Brendan's help, of course. Mm-hmm. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan's far away from the mic now. <laughs> now. You guys have to get cozy there now. No, it's okay. Come on. We're almost married. <laughs> <laughs> that's the next topic. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that topic's coming up. So one of the things that. In this book, there's a page that says, For those who struggled, sacrificed, and lost, I owe a debt. And the other one preceding is, The first wave took Uncle Bill. And, you know, I think what's beautiful about this book and what's interesting is that um, I think just like many communities, if you don't uh, pay homage to those who came before us and those who... uh, were pioneers and activists and um, gave their time and their love and their lives for uh, so that we can sit here today and talk about gay marriage. I mean, I think it's it's a real important topic for people to understand. I think it's this book is very poignant way for us to look back and forward at the same time about how we persevere and um and it's i think uh very inspirational a lot of these stories and um i think a lot of people will really enjoy checking it out and and uh there's a lot to learn from this book it's you guys did a really great job uh, Bre- brendan you did all of the like the post processing yeah. with the with the letters and the backgrounds and all that well, we um, it's gorgeous. We were able to set up the lighting so that the background was consistent for all of the shots. Uh, so that was, uh, you know, planned ahead of time. So that was reduced the amount of post processing there. But uh, to get all the jerseys red and the lettering and the and the layout, that was where the most of the post production work came in. Oh, okay. So for each portrait in this book, how uh, how long was your uh, model, so to speak, in the studio with you guys? I mean, this I'm looking at one right now. It's a great image of a man tossing a teddy bear into the air like you know is that did you take hundreds of photos is this is the person there for an hour is it 20 minutes like you guys just really strict toss the teddy bear no no actually that was actually that's our favorite one one of our favorite ones and and what happened was um this bear um, belonged to his partner who passed away and he takes him on the ride with him every year and he goes i want to do something fun with it and as he did that, he tossed it in the air, and that's when I snapped the shot. He was there for 15 minutes. Wow. And we were done. Okay, we're done. He goes, but I want to do more. I'm like, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. So that's what happened with uh, that. The shot is perfect. <laughs> it, was, it, it was just awesome. Well, it's awesome on page, time. I guess, 11. 
And one thing I like about the phrase, it says, let's bring back that world all kids once knew. And um, you know, to me, you know, all this fighting that's going on in the world and all this other all these other things you know and and is, is this right or is this wrong i think as kids we we know what's right and wrong i think only as adults do we lose that and i think that's a beautiful phrase and i think it's a it's an inspirational way to kind of look to how we can progress forward by by going back by looking back to our roots uh, one thing I was surprised about is that uh, you took pictures of the roadies also. Correct. So um, a couple of the roadies came with them, and we thought they're doing as much work as they are. And actually, one of the roadies in there, he actually helped uh, help with the book as well. Sean? Sean. Sean did the did the, the editing for it, and um, he raised $21,000, I believe, yeah. the most of any roadie ever. So we that thought it would be important to have him in there as well. Hi, Sean. How do you know he's there a roadie in here? You because they don't have bike equipment and they're at the end of the book. <laughs> I'm a roadie. Oh, how cute! There he is. Hey, I have a question for you guys. I'm I'm curious um, as to what you. Uh, this is Dave McHugh, by the way. I'm curious as to how you guys feel. Do you guys ever feel? I'm not sure how to articulate this, but I I, I get the impression sometimes that photography may be a dying art. It seems like everybody in their mother is carrying a phone on them nowadays with the camera. Uh, there was this uh, a few months ago. Was it a major newspaper in Chicago fired their photojournalist? Uh, it does seem like we're in an age where everybody thinks they're a photographer. I know it's obvious that not everyone is a photographer because there's a lot of bad photography out there. Um, but it does seem like you know that something has changed in the world, and basically, I-, I feel like there are moments where everyone feels like they're a photographer. I mean, do you guys feel like it's harder? Do you think people are relying less on professional photographers? People are doing it themselves more because of easier access to equipment and equipment's cheaper a little bit. Do you have any opinion on what's that? Your, yeah, what's your take on this? Um, we do have a lot of friends who are photographers, um, and everybody's different. And I think for us, um, the, the, what we, we try to do the most simple thing as we can. And, um, but I, you know, like anything else, it's just, this competition with everybody. Well, I, th- I think too, like, um, it's like everybody's a DJ, you know, you have iTunes. I read, um, uh, or actually I was listening to the new Daft Punk album and, uh, and one of the things they say in one of the songs is, um, you know, there is no competition. And, you know, each person has their individual ability to express best what they want to express about themselves. And once you realize that, once you realize that, you know, your duty is just to kind of express what you see as as your sense of self-expression, whether it's music or whether it's photography, it's all good. You don't have to worry about what somebody else is doing, you just have to put the passion into what you're doing, I think. And then Yeah, and there's there's something about this town where people are creative and they absolutely. find outlets to do Look at the world today. I mean, don't you think we need about a million more creative people and and a million less people fighting about stuff? I mean, I think that there is so much more room for that sort of abundance. I think it's 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 only it's a very limited kind of mindset where we feel like oh it, it's too much or it's too. It, I, I as far as I'm concerned, it's not. It's just the tip of the iceberg. It's not even barely enough. But I think a lot of people lose sight of things like uh, you know they can have their friend come photograph their wedding because their friend is not so bad with a digital camera, but they forget that, for example, a professional wedding photographer who's experienced is going to have an easier time uh, capturing the moments or knowing what moments to capture or bringing those moments out of people. I mean, I'm looking at the portraits in your book and I'm thinking, you help these people find moments or you found moments because you knew what to look for or how to coach them or whatever. And I think that's kind of a, one of the unfortunate things about this kind of death of photography I was, that I was talking about earlier is that, is that you know, there, there are everyone thinks they're a photographer, but there really are fewer experts and experienced you know, people who can find those moments. Well, and I think, you know, exactly. And, and the cream always rises to the top, you know, so the people who do have experience, the people who, who can see it, you know, like in your book, I mean, it's like, I, I know it when you see it, you know, you see this book and you say, okay, this is something special. And I think, you know, that's just a matter of it. it that also can cause people to want to try harder to get more experience to to say yeah well you know i'm taking this picture with my phone and but maybe i can do better and and i think that's the difference it's the passion that you guys have for what you do that drives you that also 
kind of comes out in your work. Absolutely. I look at it and go, wow, that's a really good picture. Yeah. And it, it tells me what isn't a really good picture. <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys have any advice for aspiring photographers? I guess I would just say just keep shooting. Uh, that's the way I think Ray and I have both learned. We are pretty much self-taught. We've taken a few classes here and there, but we just find we get better every time we shoot. We try to carry a camera with us wherever we go. And we try to shoot every weekend, if, you know, when, whenever we're free. Cool. Yeah, and I, I think, too, you know, like you said, this is a creative community. And so so many people go through maybe permutations where they're trying to find their niche. And they say, well, may, maybe I like photography or maybe I like, you know. And it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a sieve, you know. The things that end up falling through the holes or the cracks or maybe the things that they're most passionate about. Cause there's only, at the end of the day, there's only so much time in the day. So, you know, the, the, the fact that you guys commit all this time to photography is, shows your passion. You know, I like to do photography, but I can't sit there for hours and hours and, and do, you know, lighting and things. I just don't have the passion for it. I have the passion for music. And, you know, I think th that's okay. You know, and everybody should kind of seek and explore and 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 try and put themselves out there until they find really what it is that they'd like to do best. Absolutely. Creative outlet. We're going to turn now to our uh, hot topics list for the week. Um and first on our list, what's definitely been a hot topic around here this week is uh do boycotts work? As <laughs> as you guys uh, are aware, um there's been a movement in this country this week that's uh, some gay bars and some not-so-gay bars have been pouring their Russian vodka down the drain, trying to, uh, you know, st start serving only, you know, non-Russian vodka in their bars because of, obviously, all of these uh, um, issues with um, persecution against uh, lesbian, gay, bisexuals, transgendered in uh, Russia. So what do we guys, you know, what do we think? Do we think that uh, pouring your Russia vodka down the drain does anything? Well, I've been getting conflicting information. It's like on one hand saying, hey, it's not going to do anything, do this. And then the other, and then I saw something today where it's actually making a difference. So I'm a little confused. Yeah, I keep hearing, I guess one of the things I've heard is vodka is not actually a major export of Russia. So it hardly puts a dent in them if bars or American consumers of Russian vodka stop consuming Russian vodka. <laughs> but so I don't know. I'm not sure. I think one thing that it does do is that it brings awareness of the attention. That's true. Yeah. And that's a good point. And, and there's actually never a problem with bringing awareness to the issue, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I kind of agree, especially with this issue. I think, number one, the reason that they bring up this issue is kind of the same reason, you know, during the Reagan era is that they allowed such a rampant run of the Christian right is because... It's a, it's a smoke screen. It's like, okay, our government is failing. Our policies are terrible. People don't want to invest in Russia. I know. Let's point at the gays, you know, and it becomes a big smoke screen for people to get distracted by. Scapegoat. Right. You know, we become the scapegoat. And, it, you know, it's time uh, that. You mean like Obamacare here? Exactly. Is being used to exactly. smoke screen other things. Yeah. Exactly. And so, yeah. you know, I, I think it's saying. time that we say it's, that's not, ex we're no longer scapegoats and we, we do have buying power. We do have influence and, you know, whatever it is we can do to bring attention. Now, well, so they're, they're really, they're behind Russia. Yeah. They're I, not clearly. Yeah. I so mean, they, they're like in the beginnings that we were, what, 20 years ago? 30, maybe 30 years 40, ago. Yeah. The closets are getting beat down. Yeah. It's like before Stonewall. Yeah, but, I mean, all of those things, like, you know, seeing somebody raped by a beer bottle, you know, it breaks my heart. Oh, know? it's just and it, 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 it affects me, you know. So it until we're all free, then none of us are Are you free. talking about that video that's out there I, with I, those I two guys? I couldn't, I couldn't even watch it. I just read about it, you know. Yeah. And, and you know, and I think, yeah, until we can all kind of stand up and say, no, that's no longer acceptable. Yeah, I think, like, you're right. It just using our voices, using our buying power. Some people, like, some people who work for Slow Ignite say, look, we don't have anything to do with the government, so why should you be punishing our vodka? But, you know, we're too bad, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know, Deal. be careful, be careful of the company you keep. I was in uh, Russia last summer, and I hired a gay tour guide to show me gay Russia. And uh, this it was in St. Petersburg, seconds. and at the time, there was uh, there was these laws in St. Petersburg. Not They weren't national, but they were in St. Petersburg. This kind of uh, promoting anything gay, marketing gay, is illegal because the, the logic is um, 
that you're promoting uh, homosexuality to children. You're trying to turn children into gays. So it was interesting because this guy, if he if he hadn't brought me into the gay bars, I would never have found them. I mean, we walked down this alley and down this driveway to this unmarked door and knocked, and someone let us in. And I was just like, "Wow, this is this is retro." Like, you know what I mean? It was it was pretty <laughs> extraordinary. And inside, there were just like normal gay bars. One that I went to was very South Market. One I went to was a lot more Castro Street. Um, but uh, but on the outside, no labels, very low profiles. It was very interesting. Wow. Yeah. It's like going back in time. I'm reminded of the uh, 1920 speakeasies. Mm, yeah. Prohibition. Absolutely. I actually took a picture of this door of this gay bar. And of course, it's in my photo album. And it looks like a door in an alley. But it's <laughs> what, that's what I love about it is like, this is a gay bar, you know? It's like, well, that's kind of, how, you know, they were, they were like that. And not too long ago, I remember probably 15, 20 years ago going to Peoria, Illinois on an interview for a job. And, you know, you had, you still had to go into the back door. There was no sign that, that demonstrated it was a gay bar, just a light over the door. And, um, you know, so there's still, unfortunately, there's still places like that in the United States, you know. Um, so we have a long way to go. And that's why I like this page in their book, just a quick thing. On page 59, you know, the fight is not over. And um, it's a really poignant way to end the book here. And it's it's important for people to realize our fight is not over yet. There you go. Well, that concludes our first half hour. For those listening on bearradio.net, that's the end of part one. Uh, we hope to see you next week for a continuation of this podcast for part two. Or if you're listening on iTunes or the website, wait for a brief break. Remember to talk close to the mic. Yeah, well, I've turned their mic up a little oh, bit, so I'll, ju- I'll just keep adjusting it. Okay. okay. It's okay. You gotta be at least six inches, though. <laughs> six, for sure. Is that six gay <laughs> inches or six straight inches? I didn't mean that, uh-huh. but it is applicable, I guess. Okay, we're back from our break, and we're here with Brendan and Ray Ray from A Bear Nose Photography and Ray Ray's Photography. Yeah. Is what exact is the Correct. official name? Uh, this is episode twenty-eight. Yes, part two. Tim had an accident and broke his humerus. Not funny. Not funny. And Clay isn't feeling well today. And in their stead, we have Dave McHugh. He's back. Like a bad penny. There you go. <laughs> On our topic list next is uh, the question that we ask all the time, but especially this week in San Francisco, we just had the Dory Alley Street Festival, which is like a very small version of the better known uh Folsom Street Festival it's for some sort of, light it's like a it's like a except it's slightly more intense i would say but it's like a little bit of a fetish festival and uh the question of the week is why do we find scrubs and uniforms sexy because they show box <laughs> <laughs> i being i wear scrubs for work and and uh being at a place where you wear them all the time and, and you just feel like you're in your pajamas all day, like, I, I don't see it. I don't get it. Right. You know, it, I, I, I look forward to wearing what I call grown up clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but I do have a lot of people who, who like that. And, and I'm curious too. Why is that? Well, I think when they get a little tight, they, they show off <laughs> the assets front and back. <laughs> Of the scrubs, and I think that's why they're, so they're sexy. And they also have the V, which tends to show a little bit of the chest hair. So it's a visual nice. thing. It's a visual thing, and I don't know. I think it runs into, this is Vito, by the way, uh, runs into the whole wire uniform sexy, too. Absolutely, like police uniforms. I actually have to admit, for the first time ever, I went to Mr. S. Leather in June, and I bought, I went to their uh, section where they have athletic wear and jock wear, and I bought, like, football pants and, like, a mesh football shirt and, uh, you know, I kind of did like a, for pride this year, I wore sort of like a, an athlete thing and, you know. Yeah. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. I was, you know, I, I got to tell you, I love those football pants. I like to wear them around the house. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, I mean, and everyone's like, your legs look hot. And I'm like, I oh, know. You know, <laughs> little geek monster. Yeah. Actually, some lesbian at 440 was like c- coming up and she was punching my thighs where I had pads. She's like, you have real pads. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, a lesbian likes my pads. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I feel like this That's is a like tampon commercial friend. or something. Yeah. That's nasty. <laughs> now, I know somebody uh, from a previous story alley who decided to show up in a milkman's uniform, and he actually was able to pull it off pretty well. Oh, boy. Yeah. That's that's amazing. It's what pretty original. Idea. I thought it was brilliant. I, yeah, it's really good. So that was Wolf, by the way. He wants to milk the milkman. Is, is, it, is it the 
the the the how well you wear it is it breaking that barrier as opposed to like is it see i think it's all like a form of drag but in a good way like you know it, it just what you kind of get outside of your normal kind of thinking and you you know you just enjoy seeing somebody who visually looks appealing kind of like sexy. me when i go to a leather bar and i only wear shorts and flip-flops <laughs> Or is that reverse drag? <laughs> that's reverse drag. That's reverse drag. Okay. I, I think well, that's, that's my drag. It, I think some feathers, of the, it's all drag. I think some of the, the fetishization that's going on here is, that, you know, people who are into cop uniforms and stuff, part of it's that it's this forbidden thing, right? Is that, you know, you, it's it's hard to go and proposition a cop, right? Or when you were a kid, you might have fantasized about athletes or whatever. So, like, you know, I think sometimes it comes from, you know, what's what's been forbidden for you. You might have fantasized in the locker room about your classmates or whatever. So suddenly, you know, the idea of athletic wear is appealing. Or, I mean, I, you know, that's, that doesn't necessarily apply to scrubs, I don't think. But Or how about fireman T-shirts? Brendan, don't you have a fireman T-shirt? Brendan has fireman T-shirt, dude. No, you don't have any. Uh, Brendan likes... Um, how about v- leather <laughs> fireman pants? Brendan, I think Vito is suggesting you should get some. Or how about... <laughs> I'm, I'm, egging, I'm egging them on. Someone's yeah, I, fantasies I, I mean, are clear. For, for us, I, I, I've never been into the leather. Um, for me, I'm more of a suit and tie fetish for Ooh. me. So men in suit and ties is just there you go. big turn on for me. Love that. So I'd rather see that um, than leather. And there's also some people in leather that shouldn't be wearing leather, and especially assless chaps, I think. <laughs> I don't know if people don't have mirrors at their homes or what. Girl. Yes, exactly. But you should really ask a friend before you step outside. You How about so suspenders? Who's, who has leather suspenders here? I have suspenders. Wolfie does. Wolfie is, sees himself as part of the leather community, don't you? Uh, reasonably, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've I, I've always been a part of it. Like, uh, especially when I was younger, it, it was more so. I would go to, for example, Sidetracks in Chicago, and they would have this. Uh, you know, I'd say, "Where are the Bears?" You know, and they'd all frequently be more at the Eagle or more at the you know the leather bars or leather events than they were at the you know may, maybe mainstream things. So there was always this kind of. Uh, combined community where it was basically, you know, the people I, I, I suppose maybe who were outside of the regular gay community, you know, they were either outcast or fringe, considered fringe at the time. You know, it, it, and, and um, you know, I can appreciate it. I think, you know, for some people, leather is the, the, it's the smell that turns them on. It's the look on the right person, Correct. you know. And to me, it's like anything. I mean, it's it, it's all good. It's all just colors of the rainbow, you know. If, on the right person, if somebody you know is wearing it, it's fantastic. You know? But this is the summer of love, right? This is the summer of love. <laughs> the, but you will not see me in this chat, Vito, because I have common sense. Like. I know that that's not my forte. Well, that's not for you to judge. We would have to see you and then say yes or no. Trust me. All right, but what about tattoos? Why do we like tattoos? Why does our community, why, why is that a thing? I, you know, I don't know why tattoos are sexy. Um, I do know that I saw a tattoo with a guy, and I didn't have the heart to tell him, that he thought he had a bear tattoo, a bear claw, oh, it but it only had four so it was a dog paw, a not a bear paw. <laughs> That's hysterical. A bear has five dog. claws. It's like, oh. My thing about tattoos is, I, I, you know, people often will put tattoos on their body. It's kind of a permanent thing. And it's, you ask them, oh, why did you choose that image? Where does that shape come from? Why did you choose that? And and they, you know, like a, a, the most common thing you see is like Asian characters on some some big white guy. And you're like, why do you have Japanese on your arm? It means why peace. Do you have, and then, like, do you ever live in Japan? Chicken. No. Or do you, you know, do you, do you love Japan? No. Do you fetishize Japan? No. You know, do you love Japanese anime, anything? You know, they're like, no, I just like the way it looked. And I'm just like, wow, that's kind of like, and that's both me. I can't commit to any tattoo. I'm, I, I don't have a tattoo because I can't commit to anything. And then you have people who are just like, yeah, I just like the look of that character. Well, They're, like when I lived in Fort Lauderdale, a lot of, um, People just got tattoos because they were drunk. And so, you know, they're, they're on spring break. They're wasted out of their mind. And they think, ah, oh, let's get a tattoo, you know. Tasmanian yeah. devils everywhere. <laughs> yeah, mm. exactly. <laughs> Ray Ray, do you have a, a I tattoo? Have no, no, I have none. I have you are none. clean. I am clean. Brendan's the one that's decided to get tattoos this past year. He's got huge ones. They're gorgeous. They he really are. He's got one um, really Monday. Professional. Thank you. 
I think shading is the key to a good tattoo. I, I think so too. I, I I think for a while the gay community went to the tribal stuff where everybody was doing the tribal on the arm and um, everyone was doing that. Everybody was doing it, so it just looked just like everybody was copying each other. And I think to be original would be so much better, and for it to mean something to you. Mm-hmm. That's the that's the problem I have not with tattoos and set. I I'm always afraid I'll get something that ten years from now like. Because, you know, for a while, you know, some of those tribal, they, they look amazing. And then now you see some of them, you're like, oh, that looks well, really Well, my, my grandfather's hula girl on his forearm <laughs> had seen better days. <laughs> I know somebody who had tattoos put on of Invader Zim characters and imagery. I love Invader Zim. Invader Zim. <laughs> oh, my God. I got to tell you, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And now that I'm starting to feel like Star Wars is forever, I'm thinking about getting a Star Wars tattoo. I know it's totally dorky and will be it's completely not. embarrassing Star Wars is forever. to have a tattoo of the second Death Star on my back. But you know what? Oh, it is. It is starting to feel like it's forever. So I'm around your belly button. I might do it. We'll see. I'm thinking about it. I saw one with the cat. And the anus was the belly button. I oh, saw that too. Oh, it was so awful. <laughs> oh my god, it was you, terrible. You I've seen. It was, I gotta find that. I gotta find that and post that on the website. Me sick. Like I, I, oh, I threw up a little in my mouth, <laughs> and I can't imagine somebody keeping that. You know, but they're stuck with it. Well, we have somebody here, Brent, Brendan. You just got a new tattoo. Can you go through real quick, like what the logic was and how you. And and especially since it's sleeves, you can't hide that so so much. Uh, no, I, I don't know if it's really logic um, <laughs> per se, but <laughs> it's just kind of it sort of marks a moment in time in your life, and mm-hmm. just kind of felt like doing something like this, and found a good artist, had some concepts, and felt comfortable with the guy. And where where did ahead. you get those again? A uh, black heart tattoo on uh, Valencia. Yeah. Okay, we'll definitely put a link to Very that. Very handsome bear, by the way. Yes, yeah, really. <laughs> you should that's put a nerd. photograph of his tattoos I, on the website. I heard he's oh, heter- okay. he's heterosexual though. Yeah, he is, but he uh, has a gay brother who lives in West Hollywood. So. Is his brother Ooh. hot too? No, <laughs> <laughs> we'll edit that out. Do you <laughs> ever? Well, he, he admitted he wasn't. So. Do you ever talk to him? Do you ever have extended conversations with him? I'm curious. The tattoo you, artist. Yeah, course, if you know, if you ever, have you heard like what's the weirdest place he's put a tattoo or he has stories. Like that? Can't remember off the top of my head, but he's he's met. I mean, he could write a movie with all the people. That we need a tattoo show. artist on. I want to yeah. hear some, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, some good stories. Maybe I saw the website for that guy, and uh, he's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have commitment issues. I don't know. I've thought about a tattoo, but I've I've just never done anything about it. I'm Doctor Who. I'm a I'm a Whovian. I'm a huge fan too. Woo-hoo! So if I ever get a tattoo, it'll probably be I've already thought about it. It'll probably be of the Amy time Lord. Say what you were going to say. I'm saying the phone booth. Isn't that a Doctor Who thing? It's a police box. Police yes. Box, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But I, I wouldn't want that as a tattoo. So no. what would you I'm get, Vito? I would probably get the uh, symbol of the symbol of the Time Lords. The Gallifreyan symbol. Yeah, the Gallifreyan. But I need a good artist, so maybe this guy could do yeah, it. Yeah, Scott Sylvia at Blackheart. It's okay. brilliant. Actually, okay. all the guys there. There's a lot of talented guys at that shop. Okay. They have a whole uh, bio, too, of each one, like what they did and stuff. Sweet. Next topic. How public are you on the internet? And how do you feel about having your name and your photo out there on the internet? Well, I, I, I've heard stories about this that, and, and it happened to me is, you know, I started out at AOL with Big V Bear as my name. And then I've, I've used that all over the internet. And even my license plate said Big V Bear. But somehow it got associated with my name somewhere. Yeah. So now when you do a search, yeah, and I don't like it. <laughs> I want it separate. What about Dave McHugh? You said yeah, you... I'm I'm kind of all over the place. I mean, I've done uh, I have a long history doing comedy and theater and stuff. So if you Google me, luckily there's enough noise that comes up that you'd really have to filter through all of it to find you know some stuff that maybe I wouldn't want someone to find. I mean, that's the good thing. My name is kind of unique. My my last name spelling is M C K E W. It's relatively uh, unique. So most Dave McHugh searches come up with me. But, um, you know, I, I recently I joined Instagram about a year ago and I chose to use my name as my handle. And I think now that I've kind of gotten into it and I've got hundreds of followers and I'm following about a thousand people, I'm starting to feel more self-conscious about linking my photographs to my name. I know. I think you can change your name on Facebook. 
Yes, you, you can. can. Yeah, I guess, right. and I guess you can on Instagram too. I actually tried to do it. You don't lose your followers. Yeah, no, I mean, I, yeah, I'm, pro- I'm probably going to change it, but I, you, you know, can hard. change your name. Yes, you can. You well, can change your name. Yeah, because I, I, I know somebody that did it. He used a weird name. I don't know what he's thinking. But that's just a band aid. At some point, you know, if, if someone really wants to research you, and I, and I think about, you know, I worry about someone googling me, and what are they going to find? And you know, I actually have gone to two of my friends on two different occasions. One had a YouTube video of me drunk at a party making dolphin sounds, uh, and uh, they linked it to my my first and last name, and I had to take my name off. And there's another party I went to. I was wearing a dress, and uh, I was a little embarrassed about that. I mean, which is funny because you can you will find dozens of photos of me on the internet and dress in a performance context. Oh right, but right. you know because I've have I've got, I've got probably nine dresses. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> but what kind of dolphin sounds are these? <laughs> <laughs> so, authentic. Yeah, no, it was hysterical, actually. I am trainer of dolphin. <laughs> but it was a really embarrassing video. I was like sweaty and I was drunk and I was like, you know, it's just like really bad. So, I mean, I, you know, there's some ways, if you, in some ways, you can clean yourself, you clean up your image a little bit, but, you know, I don't know. Right, Has anyone gotten in trouble? And Ray Ray, have you guys ever had any issues? Well, we actually, um, people who come in and do photo shoots actually are, if they're looking for a job, they'll ask us to take the pictures down. Oh, really? Because their name will link up to their pictures on Ravers Photography. So oh. if they're shirtless or it's right, not very right. professional. I actually have two names um, for on Facebook. One is just my regular name, Ray, um, just because my family and friends from work are on there. And then I have Ray Ray where I just have all my photography and stuff. So That's I keep that idea. separate. There you go. Yeah, I was reading somewhere, you know, they said, you know, there's like a top four and a top ten. Like, you know, try not to put your phone number clear. Clear, clearly, you know, your address or, you know, I mean, I think when Facebook first started, everybody thought, hey, this is fun or, you know, whatever. But it's like, and then you think hey, it doesn't mean anything. Who's watching this anyway? You know, who cares? And then it's like, uh, you and know, you hear someone posted my bosses and asked and <laughs> yeah, they get fired. It's getting weird. And it got, yes. and it got back to him, friend yes. or not. So, yeah. I mean, yes. it, it, it's, um, and then nothing gets erased ever. Like it's like in the, Somewhere, you know, it's true. There's there's a website that you can go to. I'll find the link and put it on it that you can actually say I want a snapshot of this website from 1999, and you can get their complete website. No, I'm not kidding. It's either called uh, Web Web Archive or the Wayback Machine, something like yeah, that. Something like that. I'll I put the link. Before. I'll put the link on the web on our site. No, I mean I think it's interesting because I mean. Uh, that that goes, you know, with the whole NSA thing about, you know, so so say somebody's shirtless and you say, well, I'm not going to hire you from your shirtless. I mean, we've all been shirtless. People go to the beach. People go to the, you know, like wh- who determines, you know, I think that's a slippery slope. Who gets to determine, you know, whether or not this is appropriate or not? Well, how about this? I've applied for Twitter and they ask you for your Twitter handle. They do? And they won't let you move forward unless you give it to them. Huh. In the application process, hmm. yeah, and I, you know, but at the same time, like I, you know, I, I, I've applied for jobs where you know, some chairman of the department is shirtless in the background with his kids at a swimming pool, like pervert. No, I mean, <laughs> but like, you know, I mean, it, 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 it's just, I think it's natural. I mean, if you know, but um, you know, I, I think it's important as gay people is that again, you know, for us to have our equal rights and our equal say at the table is so that other people don't determine that oh because you're gay and you're shirtless this is scandalous but you know i can i can have my girlfriend all over the you know cover of us magazine and people magazine and stores and all this other things like you know that it's creating that double standard whereby the things we're looked at like even even our fetishes or even our whatever i mean straight people have the same thing there are conventions full of heterosexuals and leather and uniform and this and this and this and the, and yet every time you know they put gay people up on the news they want to show that part of us as opposed to you know they're putting themselves up in a different light it's a, and i think we have to be careful of that double standard you know i think in san francisco we're lucky i think our employers are very forgiving almost everybody has employees that have um, you know, they go to Burning Man, and they do weird stuff, or they wear weird costumes, or yeah, uh, you know, the, the, you know, even your straight employees are going to have photos on the internet from Pulsum Street Fair. So I think we're a little lucky here. But I have to tell you, one time I searched a uh, someone applying for a job, and uh, I I was able to from their email address find their X Tube account, and oh. I was like, wow, why would you oh even God. use that address? Like, oh my you God, know what I'm saying? I thought that was kind of shocking. But if Ouch. it was a really good account, would you have hired him? 
I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> I work in HR, but let's just say that was interesting. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh my well, god! Where do, you, where do you cross the line? That's a, you know, good question. Where do you draw the line, rather, and say, well, this is appropriate or you know what? hiring? You know what? Some positions at a company it doesn't matter if you have someone working in a certain job. It's okay if they if they're traceable to their XTube account. But if they're a certain professional level at a company, if they're a director, if they're um, you know, a very uh, PR person or something like that. You don't want someone else finding this thing. You know what I'm saying? So I think, frankly, it's up to the company and up to the physician. There's a, you know, well, a lot that's, of things to consider. No, it's poignant because it's like, so I've always wanted the sleeve tattoo. But working in medicine, I, I, I'm very um, kind of, you know, I try to be cognizant of how, how is this patient going to relate to me if I don't look a certain way, you know. And if, if I don't have a professional look, or if I, I mean, and, and I'm sure a lot of them may be forgiving or understanding, you know, but uh, some of them may be put off by that. Or some people in the hospital may, you know, say you, you don't look the part, you know, you have to, it's okay if you're in the, uh, if you're an artist or you're a rock star, it's, it's, it's you know, it's part, it's part and parcel for what you should, should look like maybe. Well, those, that times have changed. Yeah. Brendan, can you speak to that? Yeah, I think they are more accepted these days, but it, it, it is probably uh, profession specific. I mean, I'm an art director for a design studio, so oh, well. it's not that shocking if I come in with tattoos, <laughs> but with some clients, it would be uh, a distraction. So every day I do wear long sleeves. Uh -huh. um, you know, if I don't have meetings, maybe I'll wear short sleeves, but uh, if I have to mm. interface with a client, it's long sleeves. Interesting. So it depends on the client, though, but we have a lot of. Uh, what about the tear, the tear tattoos and the neck tattoo? <laughs> that, tattoos that on your may face not are really good. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Isn't that like yeah. how many years you've you killed somebody if you have a tear or I something? Don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think in jail, if you have a tear, you've killed somebody right. or something. Really? Could be, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, I it, that's why I, want, I like music, you know. I want to become a DJ so I can wear <laughs> wings. And you know, and <laughs> tattoo my face like I can't freaking wait. Like it's freedom. <laughs> fucking gonna rock it all. <laughs> so, what do you guys think? Uh, this week, um, the Pope made uh, a potentially historic comment about. Uh, I think he was doing an interview, at, I believe, at a radio station or was it a television station in Brazil? No, he was in the plane. Oh, is that where he was? He, he was, was on, plane? on physically oh, I, on the plane. Okay, yeah. he was doing a I press conference on he a was plane. Doing a press conference, and basically, he uh, <laughs> s uh, said something along the lines of, "I guess someone asked him about was there. I guess there, the question was something to do with with the issues with the." With gays in the Catholic Church, and he said, "Who am I to judge?" Right? He he kind. Of, I mean, he he said more than that. He said that he you know homosexuals commit acts of sin, but you know, I think the <laughs> the comment everyone's gravitating toward this week is, "Who am I to judge?" Well, you right. Know, it's, but it's getting. I think people are looking into it a little too much, or they're just so excited that there was anything sure from the Catholic Church, even close to acceptance. Yeah. But I, I think it's being overplayed a little bit. I think so, too. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I've been listening to NPR all week, and, and the Pope went to Brazil and apparently, you know, didn't necessarily ride the Pope mobile under the bulletproof glass and met with people face-to-face, -face, shook their hands, you know, blah, 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 blah. So uh, I think he's reaching out in ways that Popes haven't done in a long time. I think that, um, and it's getting a lot of people excited. And like him or, or not, I mean, somebody, if you talk about a following, you know, I mean, millions and millions and millions and millions of people who are influenced by what he says. It's almost like they hired a New York PR firm. Yeah. The Vatican. Probably. Got rid of the old Pope, yeah. got a new one. Got like, yeah, we didn't molest anybody. That, that never happened. On the next episode <laughs> of Mad Men. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it seems I, I almost think, like that. I think I think a couple of things like that sort of thing is hard to to take back. It really it it opens a sort of floodgate that has been locked from within the Catholic Church for a long time, and and just to ha open up that conversation and to show somewhat of it's like my mom. My mom's a Catholic Church organist, and she I said you know uh, you know the stoma thing. I'm so excited. You know you know. Why didn't you call me? You know, why didn't you say, hey, yeah. She said, well, I saw it on the news. And she said, you know, she said the same thing. She said, I'm, Ronnie, I'm really open-minded. She said, you know, we forgive gays for their sins, too. You know, I'm like, no, no, no. And I was pissed at her. And I, and I said, no, no. 
I'm not accepting that. Like, so I, you know, and I'm I, tough I, with my mom too. I, yeah. I let her know. I said, you know, it's it's not a sin. Like, I don't know what it is that you haven't figured out yet, but I, you know, so I think it's a start with the Pope. You know, it's like, you know, yeah, it, 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 like my mom. You know, it's my, like, a man we may not lie with another man. Well, but then on the next page, mom, you would have been stoned a long time ago. Yeah, you, exactly. You know. you know, and I think, but I think we also have to be realistic in, you know, understanding that so many people have been brainwashed by this crap for years and years and years. You know that 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 they may never, in this lifetime, come to a complete understanding of it, but they at least can come to some sort of tolerance so whereby they're not you know persecuting or at the very least not saying anything negative or derogatory and this is the thing we have been patting ourselves on the back around here you know with the uh the gay marriage thing in the last month and you know we see in this country all the time baby steps and we're so excited about them so just to have this comment from the pope that's like neutral slash leaning positive almost yeah i mean it's (laughs) it's it's thrilling it is you know what yeah. i mean i'm not catholic i was raised unitarian which is the opposite of catholic i think and uh you know is that I, do you wear unitars I, yeah I don't, I don't even know I, I never i you know what i actually talked my way out of sunday school when i was in third grade i said to my mom if i get all a's in school which i do why do i have to go to sunday school and she goes you don't have to go to sunday school that's a good point you know so i talked my way out of church when i was in third grade but my point is is that like i don't give a rat's ass about the catholic anything but I recognize, as you know, that this is kind of this is kind of a big deal. I mean, you know, it's a baby step. Yeah, I was driving to work thinking, like SpongeBob SquarePants. I'm like, this is opposite day. This is so awesome. Like, you know, that that you know, we're we're kind of things are happening. You know, like we're making progress, and it seems so strange. It's it, it's uh, but maybe maybe it is happening. Cool. Well, I think it's that time for back scratches. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Mine's okay. easy. Mine's quick and easy. You Is know, that your screen name? This week, <laughs> this week uh, I want to thank you guys for having me. I'm, uh, this is my second guest spot. I was a, I was a guest on one a podcast, and this is my second guest host, and I really enjoy uh, coming here and spending time with you guys. So even though it was a tragic accident that may have led me to <laughs> call me. Push her? Were you, you in know, the bushes? You I, know I'm on the, I know I'm on the warm body list <laughs> of like, who can we have come and sit in the chair? Uh, so, um, anyway, thank you guys so much for having me. I appreciate it. We love having you. Back scratch. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you for coming. Okay. This is Vito. Um, I want to back scratch Nino and David for hanging out with us at Waterworld, Joe Kelso's, uh, uh, Waterworld event. It was a blast. And I also want to talk about Lucky Bear. I'll have a link on our website. Lucky Bear's coming up in Las Vegas. Uh, a buddy of mine runs that, and it's a very relaxing event in Vegas, so that should be fun. Uh, weekend of October 1st, so check that out. And I'd like to backscratch my boyfriend, Tarek, and all you guys. And Tim, please get better. Oh, my goodness. Can't even imagine the pain of breaking a bone. I've never broken a bone. I don't, uh, I don't know. He's a good anesthesiologist. Do you think so? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Morphe. And Clay, get better. And I'd like to thank our guests. Brendan and Ray Ray, you guys are awesome. Thanks for coming on and supporting the ALC. And definitely we're trying to get people to buy that book. I want want to thank you guys for having us and giving us this opportunity to promote this book on your site. And sorry about also chewing up your wire. (laughs) (laughs) His name's Bear. Yes, his name is Bear. (laughs) Nice. Should be Diablo, but it's okay. Yeah. Uh, Diablo, the devil dog. But thank you guys. This was awesome. Thank you. Thank you're you. welcome. Great thank experience you. for us. Brendan. I just uh, want to thank you guys for having us on and giving us the opportunity to uh, uh, showcase the book some more and give it a new life and hopefully a new audience. Uh-huh. Uh, so oh. we greatly appreciate that. And thank how you. much you love and adore your, your partner. Yes. Oh, yes. That too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and our dogs. <laughs> so I know you're not used to giving back scratches. It's fine. <laughs> Hey, this is Wolfie. I'd like to give a very big backstretch to our guests because you guys have been great. I'd also like to give a very big backstretch to Dave uh, for coming on on short notice. A very big backstretch to uh, Tim. I really hope that you get a lot better. Oh, 
Um, that was a real back scratch from Ron. Yes, that felt good. I'd also like to give a big back scratch to Clay. I definitely hope that you feel better as well, as well as a back scratch to my friend James, uh, who visited me from Portland. I had an awesome time. Thank you. And that's it for me. Oh, and a back scratch for, for Vito and Ron, because both of you guys are awesome. Oh, how sweet. I like to back scratch Vito for remembering to allow me back scratches. And <laughs> <laughs> I've done this before. <laughs> and Tim, uh, and, and clearly Clay for trying to outdo Tim's illness. Nice try, but Tim, Tim gets it. And, uh, we really, really hope you get better soon. And, uh, for Dave, thank you so much for being here. Thank You're you. hilarious. And, uh, Love having you for Ray Ray and Brendan and Oso and uh, Bailey Bailey for being here and chewing the wires and uh, for you guys just uh, helping support the community and for uh, my friend Marco who's starting his own thing and going through a transition and, and doing well and um, and that's it. Great. This ends episode twenty eight. If you're listening to us on bearradio.net. That's the end of part two. This is the end of part two. And Clay's not here, so he can't do it. So who wants to do it? Me, 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 me. All right, go. Okay, everyone. See you next Tuesday. Visit us at bearelement.com.